So let's talk about how to define your problem space. I like to use the analogy of a spiral staircase because as you're reading the literature on a topic of your choice or a topic that you're interested in, as you read, you'll start to see themes and trends and recommendations for future, future research that will help you narrow down your ideas and your thoughts and eventually will drive you toward the problem space that you want to study. As you're refining the research problem, you will look at the original literature on a topic. So if you choose something like self-efficacy, there's a lot of literature out there. Uh, you'll want to read the seminal authors uh, on self-efficacy, and then you'll want to read current research. You'll start to see broad topics that have been researched and the problems that have been discussed in current research, and then you'll start to see emerging trends and themes. And you want to focus on studies mainly in the past two to three years to get a sense for the current research and recommendations for future research that are really relevant to what's going on in the world right now. As you're synthesizing the literature, here's a, here's a number of questions that you can ask yourself as you go through, or things that you can think about to help synthesize and understand the body of literature that's out there. How has your topic been studied? So if you're looking at self-efficacy, what other variables has it been studied with? What populations has it been studied with? Uh, what methodologies have been used or designs? So in what ways have, has your topic been studied? Has it uh, been looked at at the organizational level versus the individual level? What are you seeing out there related to your topic of interest? And then what trends and themes are you seeing as you read? So are you seeing a trend toward more quantitative studies that might indicate that a qualitative study is necessary to understand the context behind what researchers are discovering about relationships. Uh, what themes are you seeing? What outcomes are there for self-efficacy? What challenges are there? Um, what's the value of a person having self-efficacy? What relationships are studied with self-efficacy? Which ones are positive relationships and which relationships maybe have a negative relationship? Um, what theoretical frameworks do you see that have been studied that support uh, different research? So take a look as you're reading, you'll start to see and feel the trends and themes uh, emerging from the literature. What populations have been studied? You know, are they US-based studies or are they international studies? Uh, have most studies on self-efficacy been with um, university students or with teachers? What about in the organizational world? Uh, what about with uh, military? What about government employees? What about uh, for-profit versus nonprofit organizations? So think about the populations, see what the literature is showing. Um, I think I mentioned it earlier, what designs are employed the most? And then you also will start to see who the key authors are. So of course, there will be the seminal authors on your particular topic or variables, but then who are the authors that are currently writing and researching in an area that you're really interested in? And this will help you discover and dig up um, the problem space that you really want to study. Some of the questions, other questions that you can consider as you're reading, so you'll see all these themes and trends coming up, but these are the questions that you want to ask that will help you define your problem space. What still needs to be known? Of the research that's done that's close to what you're interested in, what are they suggesting for future research? Is this a real issue? Um, is there something that's really affecting society or students or businesses or professionals? How often is this problem occurring? Does it happen often? Does it only occur in certain circumstances? Um, how often does the problem occur? And then why do we not understand it well? And this goes back to potentially the design. So we may understand that there is a relationship between self-efficacy and another variable, but we need to do qualitative studies to understand lived experiences 
and to understand the context behind that relationship and how those connect. And then what does the, the literature say about how the problem should be addressed? Again, this goes back to future recommendations for the research. So as you're reading, as you're synthesizing, ask yourself these questions and it will help you identify the problem space, which will then be comprised of, here's what we know and what we don't know about a topic. Here's how we came to understand all of that. These are the theories, the designs, the methods, the instruments that were used to get to this point. And then that tells us this is what we don't know yet and what this study will address. Okay, so your problem space, what is known, what is not known, and this is based on what number two describes here, existing research that has only focused on quantitative methods, uh, and we need to understand the context of this particular phenomenon. And therefore, the problem statement for my study is. Um, and then you'll define what's currently not yet known and what your study will address. Okay. When you think about your problem space, um, think about it from several different perspectives. Okay. Once you've synthesized the literature and you think you've got a good problem area that you want to address, think about it from a bunch of different perspectives. What is the perspective from the organizational side? How will addressing this problem benefit organizations, um, profit, nonprofit, universities, military, government, etc.? What's their perspective on the problem? And then you also consider it from the societal perspective. Like, how is this affecting society? What's the impact? So my study focused on uh, the differences in work engagement between virtual workers and those working in the office. It's a societal issue because more workers are moving to working from home, which affects the family, which affects work-life balance, and also has an effect on the organization. So there's benefits to the organization for virtual work as well as for the family. So there's an organizational as well as a societal perspective for the problem space that my study addressed. You also wanna look at it from a methodal me oh, I can't say it, methodological perspective, okay? Um, why is it important to do a qualitative study on this particular issue? Why would a uh, comparative design, quantitative comparative design be beneficial based on what you know in the literature and what is not known in the literature? Okay, and then the last perspective that you wanna consider is the population. If you're going to uh, use a specific population, you want to understand what's the value of addressing this problem for this population. So my study focused on instructional designers and their work engagement, working at home versus working in the office. And the perspective of the population is because of the coronavirus pandemic, instructional designers had increased demands put on them because we went away from doing instructor-led training to more e-learning and virtual training. And that meant that instructional designers had to go back and do more work to translate instructor-led courses into e-learning and virtual learning. So what ended up, what ended up, ended up happening is instructor, instructional designers had more demands because they had a greater workload but then they also personally had to adjust to the work from home orders because of quarantines and um, stay at home orders. So that was the populational perspective for my study and why it was important to address the problem, okay? So just some ideas to give you some perspectives and how to frame your problem space. Um, this is how I put my study together to describe my problem space. So what is known on the left, this is what I read in the literature, and what is not known is on the right, also read in the literature, but it pointed to that uh, societal and organizational need that people are moving more to virtual work, that employee engagement leads to improved employee performance, um, and that personal resources are positively related 
to work engagement. And then this last one talking about the demands placed on instructional designers, that, that's the populational perspective that I included when I supported my problem space. So I have a challenge for you uh, to kind of take what we've talked about and put it into practice. So I would suggest go and look up a dissertation that's related to your topic or one that you have saved that you've been referring to. Go to the problem space section if there is one specifically identified. If not, kind of scan through. It should be in chapter two usually. And see if you can identify the argument that they make in their dissertation and identify what they state is known and not known in the literature that then leads to their problem statement and see if you can follow their logic in understanding the argument for their dissertation, how they synthesize their literature to clearly define the problem space for their study. I hope this was helpful for you and um, good luck on your dissertation. I will see you in the next video.